Greetings. I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another, you got it, Hobo Technos product review. Today we have the Sun Gold Power 130 watt folding solar suitcase kit. Can this sub $200 solar panel survive the fall off a 10 foot RV roof? Let's find out. And no, I'm not kidding about that. Stay tuned for what happened to this solar panel kit later in this video. But let's talk about the details of this unique folding solar kit because most of these kits, they come in 100 watt or 200 watts. Well, this is 130 watts. Each one of these panels are 65 watts a piece, which gives it a little more power than your standard 100 watt in about the same footprint. Now these are high quality panels. These are the same exact solar panels that Renogy uses. So you're basically getting Renogy panels at a discount price. This folding solar kit is water resistant, so you don't have to worry about leaving this out in the weather. We're gonna go ahead and show you the PWM controller that this comes with. It is a cheap PWM controller, probably worth about $10. But it does the job. When you're only using one solar panel like this, you can get away with a cheaper PWM controller because an MPPT controller for 130 watts is usually kind of overkill. Now we do test the output of the solar panels independently and we're gonna show you that here in a moment. Now even though this does have a cheaper PWM controller, it can be voltage programmed. So you can adjust it to AGM, regular lead acid, even lithium drop-in batteries. This can charge all of them. This is programmed out of the box for charging a lead acid battery. Let's show you how this sucker folds back up. So folded up, this is 30 by 22 by 2.6 inches thick. And it weighs about 24 pounds, so it's not that heavy. It also comes with a soft case, which is really easy to use. You just lay the panel inside the soft case, make sure you have the handle lined up properly. And then you just zip it up. So let's show you what's on the other side of the panels and how this thing works. If you're curious about the specifications, there they are. And yes, this thing is absolutely grody because we used this for two months out in the desert to charge up Heidi's RV batteries. So if you're wondering why this looks weird, it's because I added an extension cable to this. Um, the original factory cable is sort of short for her RV. So basically what I did is I removed this from the controller and I put my own extension cable in. So I just set it up so I put this, I put these connectors on and so I can plug it and unplug it from her batteries. And of course these clamp to the batteries. I'll show you that here in a moment. Some of you with a keen eye might notice there's some damage. There's some bends and bumps and bruises on this. Let's show you what happened. So we're out here camping at the State Trust Land waiting for the Pyro Fest. And I've been testing the Sun Gold Power 130 watt folding solar panel kit. It comes with the solar controller and everything. Basically you hook it directly to uh, your house batteries to charge them up. This is it right here. It's actually been doing a pretty good job keeping her batteries topped up. Now we did have this up on her roof and we got some strong winds about 30 something miles an hour. It actually blew off the roof this way, fell down glass panels first on her mat. We got lucky that it actually fell on her mat, glass panels down. And when I saw it before we flipped it up, I said, that thing's destroyed. There's, there's no way these panels didn't shatter, but they didn't. You can look and I'll show you the extent of the damage. Just kind of goes to show you the quality of the panels that are going into this thing. As you can see, there's no real damage to the panels themselves. It did hit this corner pretty hard. You can see how hard this is scraped up. Now remember, this was brand new when I put it up on the roof. We did lose one of the center bars. It looks like the majority of the fall damage happened here on this side. When it hit this corner, it bent this pretty good. You can see how floppy that is. And it also put a dent, bent the actual metal frame which again, I'm surprised didn't crack the panel. This one too is also wobbly. And this is where the uh, connection for that bar was. On this side, the damage wasn't as bad. This one actually stayed intact. It did break right there. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up finding some other L brackets or possibly just duct taping this thing back together. 
Now the good news is that it still works perfectly fine. It's been doing a pretty good job charging our batteries. I think our batteries are at 13.8 right now. We saw them the other day go up to 14.2. Now we do have some overcast conditions. All she needed is a simple way to keep her house batteries charged up when she's camping because she doesn't have any other way to keep the batteries charged. She can't really run the generator or anything like that on this. The downside is that I haven't finished my actual review video on this yet. I've done the testing part, but I have not done the intro or outro part. So when you watch this video, you're gonna actually see a part of the panel damaged and part of it when it was perfectly brand new. So keep an eye out for that. So yes, this thing actually survived a fall off a 10-foot RV roof and is still working perfectly fine. In fact, Heidi was able to fix the legs. She spent quite a bit of time and went and got some angle brackets at the store. So you can see, she replaced these angle brackets on both legs to basically make this thing like brand new. So these legs just lock like this. And she did the same thing to this side because they were all broken. The only one she didn't replace was this one. That's the factory one right there. So once the legs are folded up and locked into place, make sure they are locked. You just flip it up and aim it towards the sun. And again, being Arizona, we have no sun out here. It's been weeks, we barely get days that aren't loaded with clouds. Let's show you the solar controller. So here you have the solar controller. Like I said, it's a really cheap PWM controller. It does have some USB ports on there, which I would recommend you cover if you're really gonna have this out in some rough weather. But for modest rains, it's gonna be under the panel. It's not gonna be a problem. So you'll see right now it's not on. What I have to do is just hook up the battery. And there we go. It's now working. It's showing the solar is charging the battery and it is currently supplying 13.1 volts. And of course it has a temperature controller. It'll tell you how many amps and it has a load. So if you wanna hook up a load to these two terminals, you can do that. Most people don't use that feature. So here is where you adjust the cutoff voltage. So what it'll do is it'll actually charge up to that 14.8 volts. So what you have to do is hold that button down, hold the button down on the far left side, and it'll let you adjust the voltage up or down. So I currently have it set to 14.8 because Heidi's batteries in her RV are kind of dead. They're, they're on their last leg, so I was set the voltage a little high. So what you'd set this to for most RV batteries most lead acid RV batteries at least, is 14.4. Or you could set it to 14.6 and you're still perfectly fine. So for most lead acid applications, including drop-in lithium batteries, 14.6 volts is just fine. Now, if you have uh, batteries that are on their way out, you might want to bump it up a little bit. You know, or you can actually crank up the voltage if you want to equalize your batteries. If you want to equalize your batteries, you can put up to 15.5, let it run for a couple of hours, and it'll actually burn the sulfates off the lead plates. Now, you can only do that for lead acid batteries. You don't want to do that for lithium. But you can see, it actually won't save your setting unless you actually press this button before it times out. So don't just think that by changing the number to 15, for example, that it's gonna save. In order for it to save, you gotta press that button again before it times out. And of course it has settings in here. If you wanna turn the load on or off a specific voltage, um, it'll do that as well if you actually wanna use the load parameters. That's really all there is to this controller. And how you hook this up is can't be any more straightforward. You take the red clamp, you put it on the red terminal of the battery, you take the black clamp, and you put it on the black terminal of the battery or the negative. So red the positive, black the negative, and then you're done. Now there seems to be a lot of confusion about solar panels and batteries. You have to have a solar controller of some kind, even a really cheap one, to plug a solar panel into a battery. If you plug the solar panel directly into a battery without a solar controller, you can only overcharge it. You could destroy the battery, or even cause a fire. So absolutely, always make sure you have at least a solar controller between your solar panel and your battery. And another point of confusion, a lot of people call this a battery. This is not a battery, it's a lot more complicated than that. This has a solar controller already built into the input. So you cannot, and I'm gonna stress this again, you cannot use this solar controller, these wires coming out, and plug it into the Jackery, or any other portable power station for that matter, because these are designed to take raw solar panels without a controller. Does that mean you can't use this at all? Absolutely not. 
what you have to do is bypass this. You can hook two wires directly to the solar panels, and if with the right adapter, you can plug it right into this, no problem, and charge a Jackery or any other power station. Now, I'll probably have to dedicate an entire video to that so I can explain it in detail for those of you who don't understand how this works. So what we're gonna do to test the actual solar panels is to disconnect the solar controller. Okay, so now we have the bare wires. Okay, there's the sun in the sky. I'm just showing you how low it is in the sky. This is the dead of winter, probably about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And I did have to prop the, the solar panels up a little bit on this box. All right, I angled the panels a little bit more towards the sun. I think I kind of got it now. And I have 103 watts. It said 104 there a minute ago. And it looks like that's about all we're going to pull today. That's still very respectable. Now note, that my original testing with this was done back in December of 2019. So it was the middle of winter when I did my solar testing on this. As you can see, I got almost 105 watts. So if you have a 100 watt suitcase kit, you might get 80 watts out of it. Just getting this slightly larger suitcase kit puts you ahead of the game because it gives you at least 100 watts, and that's in a winter. I'm expecting now, since it's middle of April almost, that if I had this on a sunny day, it'd probably put out closer to 120 watts. But of course, look at the clouds. I can't test it. It's been like this for days. So we're here with Miss Heidi, and she's the one who was actually using the Sun Gold Power Kit for, what, about six weeks? Eight weeks yeah. or something like that in Quartzite? Yep. So tell us what you think about it. I love it. I kept my batteries charged up so I could boondock the whole six or eight weeks we were out there, and I was able to cook and clean and do everything that I normally do. and not worry about my batteries being dead when I went to take off. So you recommend it then? I do. Cool. Well, it's thanks. mine. I'm keeping it now. Yeah, it's, just, it's hers. She's keeping it now. She, <laughs> I had to pry it from her cold fingers just for this test, so for this video. And I have to give it back to her. So let's, let's show you guys where she keeps it in the RV, because I know a lot of you are probably wondering where she keeps something like that. So this is where she keeps it. Uh, right here in the kitchen, bungee to the wall, and it doesn't seem to go anywhere. It's great for when I'm traveling, and it keeps it straight and upright so that it doesn't fall over and get broken. So what do I think about the Sun Gold Power Folding Suitcase Kit? Well, this thing's pretty awesome. Uh, I was really surprised that something that costs under 200 bucks has this kind of performance. These are really high-grade panels, and even with the cheap controller, it had no problem for months, even after falling off her roof, charging her to house batteries. She has two 100 amp hour, like really cheap Walmart house batteries, lead acid ones. And this had no problem keeping up with all her cooking. She was running the fan and running the lights and a whole bunch of 12 volt stuff. And this had no problem every day keeping her batteries over 12.4. As for the price, I know on Amazon it's showing, I think $235 or something to that effect. But I did have a code for this that brought the price down to $199 from Sun Gold Power. Unfortunately, it expired before I shot this video today. So I wrote to them, asked them to renew the code. I'm gonna try to get it renewed, but because of Amazon's policy now, they don't like to allow sellers right now to create new coupon codes or new coupons for a lot of products that are considered unnecessary during the pandemic. But I did write to them this morning, and there should be, if I was successful, a code in the description below, which will take this panel down to 199 bucks. You can't beat that with a stick because the Renogy panel that's 100 watts is closer to $300. And this uses exactly the same technology, and it's waterproof, and it's sturdy. We know it's sturdy. We had this thing set up for six straight weeks in quartzite, charging her batteries every day. We left it outside in the rain, in the dust, there was a lot of dust, blowing dust clouds. There was a lot of wind, which is actually what knocked it off the roof in the first place. And after that, we didn't put it up on the roof anymore. And the reason we put it up on the roof in the first place was because of all the shadowing we were getting from other people's rigs and stuff like that. So we put it up on her roof in order to get a straight shot at the sun. We realized later that wasn't absolutely necessary because her batteries were topped up within a couple of hours. So if you're interested in the Sun Gold Power 130 watt folding suitcase kit, there's a link in the description below. Don't forget to look for that promo code if I was able to renew it. 
And this just might be the solution a lot of you are looking for. You're looking for something that's more rigid, that's more sturdy, that you hook up directly to your RV batteries. Unlike a regular folding solar panel that doesn't have a controller in it, this is ready to go for your RV or van as long as you're trying to charge a battery directly with this. And like I mentioned before, you can use this to charge a Jackery. However, you have to bypass that controller and run the wires directly from the solar panels into this input. It's gonna be a little slow for the new 1000, but for the 240, 160, 290, 500, 130 watts is plenty. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And here's a bonus. A lot of you asked me before, how do you keep your starter battery in your vehicle or your RV or your boat or your motorcycle topped up with a solar panel? Here we have the Sun Gold Power Kit right here facing towards the sun. Then all you have to do is hook up the black clamp to your negative on your starter battery or your house battery, and then the red clamp to the positive. Guess what? Now your battery will never die and it won't get overcharged because the solar controller will make sure that your battery doesn't overcharge no matter how much solar you get. And since this is waterproof, those of you who want to store your vehicles in a remote garage or something like that that doesn't have electricity, you can use this and leave it out 24 seven in all kinds of weather. This might be worth the investment to keep your expensive starter batteries topped up over the off season. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. RV Golf Guys.